Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, are about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is the highly respected president of Rima Services, which has provided the sound for some of the most famous artists and bands in the world for concerts here in Hawaii. He is Pat Koo, and today we are going beyond concerts. Hey, Pat, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Oh, what a rough evening. Thanks for having me. Oh, but, you and I, we know that we know each other for so many years, and I'm so excited to have you on today's show, Pat. And and you've been such a great leader of Rima, but I want to first ask you if you can share about your background. Well, you know, I'm just considering myself a local homegrown boy. Grew up in small town Waimalu before there was Pearl Ridge, before there was a new town, before there was even the freeway. When I was in elementary school, they were actually pounding the pylons to build the freeway overpass right outside my house. And uh, I remember coming home from school and had, I used to be a JPO and had, uh, I get all the black oil dots all over my white shirt. And, you know, mom would get all upset every time, you know, the next time I put on the shirt, got more white, black dots. But, you know, hey, that was life growing up uh, in the country back then. Um, went to Waimalu Elementary School and ended up at IA High School and went on to the University of Hawaii, where I was studying to be a vet. Um, surprisingly, um, ended up in electronics kind of as a, as a backstop to my original career. But from when I first started high school, I worked at a veterinary clinic. I just had it in my mind. I'm going to be a veterinarian. And I worked all the way through college at this vet clinic. But then in my junior year, I had an epiphany. It's like, you know, the reality was uh, coming from out of state, just the sheer number or the lack of numbers of veterinary schools in the country. It was a numbers game. And I wasn't going to be a vet was the bottom line, this shortcut. So I had to make a, make a turn, make a life choice. And, uh, Switched to electronics, which was always my hobby, and I loved it. So uh, went on to electronic school. There was a local electronic school that doesn't exist anymore. It was a great school for technicians. Um, right out of tech school, I was hired by Hughes Aircraft, and I straight from school I went to California and worked in aerospace back in the seventies, eighties, sorry, eighties, late eighties. And found my way eventually back to Hawaii doing audio, which was always a hobby from uh, from high school. Wow, that's interesting, Pat. And and I never knew that you wanted to be a vet. And Pat, you're you're you have such a wonderful family. And your younger son Kavika was my tennis student uh, for for some years. And yeah, you've seen me in action on the tennis court, and, and he's given us, us some stress. Does he still give you stress at all, or what? That's my son. If I wouldn't expect anything else out of that boy. You know him. Um, my son, I've been blessed with two great boys. But, yeah, Kavika has always been the boy I've always said is my, my surprise. He always is full of surprises, and I will say always pleasant surprises. Just from out of the blue, that's just Kovic. I expect the unexpected from him. Well, your wife, Terry, and, and your two sons are, are awesome. And Pat, I want, I want to ask you if you can share about what services uh, Rima provides. Oh, so we specialize in pro audio reinforcement. Uh, we also, part of doing entertainment is our specialty. Doing entertainment is a necessity to do the backline or the band gear that goes with the bands. So we specialize in all of that. Um, the backline from grand pianos to organs to guitar amps to bass amps, drum sets. We have like 10 different drum sets. 
you name it. That's kind of all the services and the technical staff that's necessary to support all of that. That's our specialty. And you do corporate events and weddings and business. I mean, everything, right? We do. We do. Corporate is um, our mainstay, actually, as much as we specialize in entertainment. Um, what people, not too many people know, is that corporates um, bring in tremendous uh, acts and headliners that never quite make it to the public arena here in Hawaii. So, Pat, uh, your, I mean, your, your company is one of the, is the top sound company in Hawaii. You have some equipment that no other company in Hawaii has. But um, how did you create such a superior culture of excellence with your company? Well, I got to say, it starts with the people. You know, it really does. Um, buying equipment, anybody with a large pocketbook can buy equipment. Maintaining that equipment and providing the technical staff, that's, that's the important part to all this high-tech gear. I mean, all the gear is nothing if you don't have the staff that, one, can maintain it, and two, knows how to operate it and bring it to its best performance. You know, my guys, I stress with them that, you know, anybody can own gear, um, but also realize that any of this gear as high tech as it can be, anything made by man is going to fail at some point in time. Therefore, you know, in order to maintain the excellence and the reputation that we want to maintain, we have to do everything humanly possible to put ourselves in a position to make sure that gear is working. And include, that starts from maintenance, that starts from constant testing and just staying on top of it, keeping track of every piece of gear that goes out and the history of it so that we can anticipate and head off any obvious points of failures. Well, Pat, I, I know many of your REMA team members, and I know that that you really treat them like your second family. I mean, you got, it's, it's so special. They're all such great people. And I want to know what's a, what's a risk that an example of a risk that you and your team members have taken um, in the past? Well, one of the biggest risks, I will say, in the 22 years that we've been in business would have been in 2009. Um, new president at the time came into office. It was a time when, well, everyone was watching um, banking industries as far as there was publicity about, you know, corporate misspending and junket trips, et cetera. Um, what that did was it put a stress on the corporate travel, the incentive market that we do, which is our mainstay here. So incentive sales, what we do is rewards for salespeople of the, of the corporations. And if you don't have a sales staff, you don't have a business. So incentive trips, or rewards. They're not junket trips. You know, they set goals, companies set goals, and they, those salespeople have to meet those goals in order to qualify for the trips. Well, back in 2009, um, when they were, there were some businesses, corporations that were caught doing odd things, the market shrank almost immediately. It was literally one week after the inauguration speech. I got tired of answering the phone. We lost 60% of our business in one week's time. And, you know, after about a month or so, the writing was on the wall. You know, there's no way we could sustain our current staff, you know, with that reduction in income. It, it totally came out of the blue, totally unprepared. Um, so I gathered the staff and, um, we, we sat down and I gave them two options. I said, you know, here's the reality. You know, we can't maintain. I mean, we're, we've lost a tremendous amount of business or about to. And um, I have to lay off two people. I said, that's option one. Option two was we can all keep everybody on, but we're going to all have to take a cut in pay. And if we do that, 
I'll keep everybody on. We'll just all share the burden. And without hesitation, that was the most impressive display of teamwork um, I was ever a part of. They told me, we're all going to take a cut and pay. And I was like, wow, I was humbled in that moment. So to go on the rest of the year, and actually it took us two years to fully recover. To go on from that point was a big risk. I know what I did, but it's like, to me, from that reaction, how can I let them down? You know, I'm, 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 the, I'm the leader. I, I have to. I have, as far as I was concerned, I had no choice. We're moving forward, and I'm going to do everything in my ability to keep everybody here. So that was a big risk back in 2009. Wow, that's really uh, impressive. I mean, to hear that, you know, from from your team members, but that just goes to show you how much loyalty, how much respect they have for you and, and the culture of excellence that that you have created with your company. And Pat, you, you know, I you did the Duran Duran concert, and that was one of my favorite concerts to, <laughs> to see. And it's incredible. I mean, you've done Duran Duran, The Eagles, Earth, Wind and Fire, Elton John, and you have a behind the scenes look at some of these, the, the biggest bands in the world. What, why are these bands so successful for so many decades? You know, success, it's got a common denominator um, and it starts usually at the top. So whatever team we're talking about, it usually starts at the top and the formula seems to be the same. I can meet a crew. I can meet a crew right off the bat. We don't normally deal directly with the 10 talent. You know, we respect that. We respect their privacy. And, you know, we deal, but we'll deal with everybody else in the entire organization. And you can tell right off the bat from my first correspondence uh, via email, phone calls, and when you meet them in person, it's like they got a good boss. You know they got a good boss. They love their boss. They put in all their efforts for their boss. And everybody is just doing their part, you know, as a team. You know, everybody's just happy in their job. And it's just a common thread I see over and over. You mentioned a few of them. You know, I can go on and on like old timers. I'm talking like. You know, Tony Bennett and stuff like that, you know, guys like that, you know, uh, it's just that, that makes me want to wake up and go to work in the morning. That meeting people like that is incredible. No. Oh, and Pat, you know, I, I know that you really love con- country music and you, you are culturing me to, to some of these country uh, acts in these concerts that you're doing. And one of the the biggest shows you did was Garth Brooks, and mm-hmm. and I know you love Garth a lot. And what is it about Garth that impressed you so much? That was a that show was different in the sense that Garth came. I don't know if people know know this fact. He came out, him, Trisha, and his two airline pilots. That's it. He brought no crew. Didn't bring his production, no management, nothing. He did it all himself. It was a fundraiser for uh, Arizona Memorial. He was all about it. He's all about he's all about the military and supporting the military. Anyway, this was one of the few cases in my twenty plus years being in this business. We got to interact with the headliner um, as part of the crew. He was the crew. He was the talent, but he was the crew too. I tell you what. The guy was as down to earth as anybody I've ever met. Humble man. I mean, here's Garth Brooks, the largest selling artist of all time, walking around, introducing himself to all the crew and taking the time to shake their hand and say, hi, I'm Garth Brooks. What's your name? What do you do? I mean, just out of the blue. You know, it's like it was it was incredible to see. Oh, I, I love hearing that when when these famous acts, they're just so down to earth and, and oh, yeah. so nice. And and Pat, you know, I, I know that you have such a passion for what you do and how you do it. 
But what's the number one reason why you love your job so much? Why do I love my job? Because I, this is this is true story. I tell everyone, you know, I do audio for a living. You know, I have been blessed that I didn't have to get a real job all my career. I've gotten this far in life without having a real job. You know, they say if you go to if you love what you do, you never you never really go to work. And I I love what I do. I mean, it's it's I've had the privilege to work with amazing artists and just my crew in itself, you know, working with my people, striving. Our goal always has been to be a world-class audio company, a company of people and technicians that we could, you could drop us in anywhere in the world on any crew and we would fit right in. And that was our goal. And trying to do that and keep maintain that is what I love about my job. Just being able to mentor people and, and just keep it going. Oh, I, lo- I love that. The, the details that you guys have, the, the level of excellence is, is, is amazing. And, and Pat, you know that Def Leppard is my all-time <laughs> favorite band in the world. And thanks to you, when they came to do two concerts here in Hawaii at the Blaisdell Arena, I got to do a, a meet and greet on both nights with them because of you. And Pat, I thought I was going to be like super nervous. I think I was beyond excited and nervous that I just had this calmness when I meet them, when I met them, because it was just so surreal. I mean, they're like the top three best-selling bands all time in the world. And, Mm -hmm. and I just want to thank you for that experience because that was, um, that was just the most incredible. I mean, <laughs> to to really meet them, and you know, my friend Justin Cruz, he and that's oh, yeah. his favorite band band as well. But how was it working with Def Leppard? Oh, Def was great. I mean, again, their their crew and their people just fell in that category of you know, you know why, you know why they are where they are and have the longevity that they have. They're just good people and stuff. And by the way, I, I'm going to question the host. So. Tell them about the second meet and greet when you walked in the room. I, I never forget that part of the story. Well, because on the first meet and greet, I brought them my Beyond the Lines books and then they had remembered me. So when I went back the second night with Justin Cruz, as soon as we walked behind, you know, in, in to see them, they said, Rusty, you're back. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh my. and then Justin looked at me saying, Dude, they know you. <laughs> you upstage the rock stars, Rusty. <laughs> that was that was incredible. And Pat, I know you have my books. And what are some things that stood out to you in my books? Oh, there's a bunch of them that, you know, reading through your books, that's that's everything in that I strive to be and I try to push on to my people. I mean one one of them that comes to mind was you were talking about creating the environment, you know, and I was the listen first and speak last. That that is exactly what I do. I read that. It's like, oh, did you you quoting me in the book? Uh, you know, maybe it could be, but uh, you know, maybe because of my trade. You know, I'm an audio guy. We listen. You know, I'm trained to listen to the articulation of the music you listen for all the little subtleties and stuff like that and being a trained electronic technician in order to troubleshoot anything you have to have an understanding of the entire circuit before you know where to begin so i think those are the traits that i use you know in just dealing with people day to day it's like you know be the last one to speak let everybody else speak first and then i can use what their their point of view and double check my own opinion before I speak. No, uh, you're still right about the listen first and speak last and and also about you, it's the environment that you create and uh Pat I want to know what effects did covid have on your company and your team? Well, 
what is it had uh, has done, and we're still in it. We're not quite out of it. I mean, as much as government, I understand, you know, the restrictions that had to be put in place. You know, large gatherings that to minimize the spread. We all get that. Um, what people don't may not understand, or government, I should say, doesn't quite understand or have a full grasp is. Until we're at gatherings of 100%, our entire industry is at risk, you know, um, just by the nature of what we do. We need large gatherings of people. So for a public concert to come back of the thousands, that um, we won't see that until government restrictions are lifted. Um, but we've managed, you know, again, I have a resilient team, you know, and they've they're awesome. I, I got to say, you know, when TPV monies ran out, or when we first got hit back in, you know, March, monies ran out in June. You know, here we are. Fast forward, we're in July of the following year. Um, my team, they gave of themselves. They've come in to work and do whatever we could do. We're starting to pick up. They come in and I may not be able to pay them much. But that was never part of the equation. They are just, we're all family and we all want to see, see it through the end and we're going to find the way. Yeah, you guys are all resilient, that's for sure. And Pat, a lot of people don't realize that if the pandemic continues on and all of these restrictions um, stay in place, that you know, your company, other companies would have to oh, yeah. sell all of your the equipment that you guys have to mainland companies or uh, companies from other countries. And then there would be no equipment here for future concerts and yeah. events, right? Yeah. So Hawaii being, you know, the, the nature of where we are in the middle of the Pacific, you know, they can't, groups can't travel with their gear. You see on the mainland tours, just going night after night after night, one venue to another, where well, they're carrying their own equipment in those situations. Hawaii, they can't, they, the cost is prohibited to bring all of their gear. And that's why we, as a rental company, that's, that's what we do. We provide them that opportunity to come here, to go to a destination and, you know, perform. So without companies like, you know, Rima and it go you know, on and on down the list, the, the lighting companies, the staging companies, down to the catering. I mean, all of us in our industry, you know, w without us here, if we don't make it through COVID, the, those public concerts are at risk. You know, groups will just skip. They'll just skip what? No, you're still right about the domino effects and how it really Absolutely. impacts so many businesses uh, that really, you know, cater to these concerts and events that, that we have here. And Pat, I want to ask you, when you do an event, um, I know that you try to control everything that you have control of, but there's some things beyond your control. Um, there's always things where you have to prepare to, to expect the unexpected and, and have the right mindset. So when something uh, unexpected happens, you can adapt and adjust. How do you deal with that? Well, that's just, I mean, I look at it as, uh, is, is just, that's just the cards you're dealt. You know, you got to expect the unexpected. Anything can happen. It's just, I mean, from, you know, somebody just, knocking over a cup of water onto a snake head that might have shorted out some stuff. You better be ready to jump up there and fix it, you know, kind of thing. So it's just the mindset we have. We just have to be. I mean, we're we're just standing by. We're always standing by. Our eyes are always scanning. We're looking for things. It's all about risk you know, minimization. Yeah. So we set up, we do things a certain way. We have procedures why we do things, why we set things up a certain way, why we run cables a certain way to minimize all these potential hazards or failure points. And, you know, it's, I could tell you a story, uh, one big concert that we had done, I will, I'll leave them unnamed. 
big Christian concert. Band came in and said, hey, we want to use this particular console, and this is how we're going to configure it. And I'm scratching my head saying, you know, I don't never seen that configuration before. You go, oh, no, it can be done. I said, okay, more power to you. Knock yourself out. So they go ahead. They set it all up. To their credit, it is working. We get your sound check. Everything's great. So sound check ended about 5 o'clock. Band walks off stage. We bring the headliner in. Then I hear something from the monitor engineers like, oh, the console crashed. I'm like, okay, well, go ahead and fix it. So we reload it. We reload it, get it all gone. It took a while, rebuild it, got it back up. Okay, drop in your file. Uh, I didn't save it. I'm like, huh? <laughs> so to shorten the story, they got off stage about 5 o'clock. Headliner hits the deck about 8.30. We get through all the opener. Opener is on stage. House is full. They got the board running about 8.20. The engineer had 10 minutes to put that together. The band went on stage. I got to tell you, I can, you could just, I can read the expressions on the face. They're professionals. They just powered through it. I guarantee you that first 30 minutes of the set was hell for them but they just powered through and um, they got through it but that's just one of the examples of all these things that can happen you try to minimize it but you know something, something's gonna happen well wow, talk about cutting it close there up huh, pat <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> now pat i want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up who's uh Who's an artist or a band that you would love to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot. But here's one, and don't date me. Uh, one artist I always wanted to work with, um, she's, still in, she's still out there performing, was Shania Twain. When Shania first hit, she's never come to Hawaii. When she first hit, uh, I used to tell everybody, I told all of my promoter friends, they thought I was crazy. I'm like, so if you book Shania, I'll give you a free show. I won't charge you anything for audio. That's how bad I wanted to do it. But that's one on the list that, you know, got away, didn't get a chance to do. Well, hopefully uh, a Shania concert might happen in the future. We can all like cross our fingers and cross our toes. But Pat, I really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today and You've been such a great friend uh, for so many years, and and you you have such a fantastic company uh, with Rima and your team members. It's just very impressive. Oh, thank you, Rusty. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Pat. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com, and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Pat and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.